Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to a brand new mod spotlight on a mod that I haven't had the opportunity to play with before. It's time to take a look at the Witchery mod. Witchery has been around for a pretty short period of time actually, but a ton of content has been added in such a short period of time, and the mod author is really working hard. He's been adding a ton of different uh, mechanics and a bunch of different new items and stuff to the game that's really a lot of fun to play with. Uh, there's circles to do magic within, there's wands that you can get, there's a bunch of magical items you can collect, uh, there's there's mobs, there's uh, creatures that you can control. I mean, like the list of stuff you can do is crazy. You can infuse items and players with magic, you can put curves Versus on other players. It's actually a really neat mod for like some player versus player stuff going on if you want to start messing around with some of the players on the server that you're on. I mean there's just there's a bunch of stuff to take a look at. So we're going to cover all the facets of witchery. We're going to get started with the basics and then move into the more powerful and advanced stuff and uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you guys everything. But take my word for it there's a lot to see. This is going to at least be a two-part spotlight maybe even three parts. All right guys let's get started taking a look at witchery. Alright guys, the very first thing you're going to want to make to get started in witchery is the following item. A witch's oven. The oven is going to be used to cook up some stuff. Um, so the witch's oven right here, you can see, uh, it's a pretty dark item, so a little hard to see in any eye. Uh, but the recipe is simply uh, iron base, so iron bars, iron, and a bucket. The oven here uh, is actually pretty much like a furnace. You want to cook some things in here, um, but it's a little bit different because you'll get some extra output. First off, any wood-related materials like saplings go in here, and you'll get some wood ash, which is going to be used uh, for some of the things in the mod. Now, depending on which type of sapling you put in, you'll get different um, little uh, potion type things called uh, exhales or hints of rebirth or the breath of the goddess and foul fume. These are other components that are going to be used uh, throughout the mod. And you can also throw in a, a few other things like fish and pork chops to cook them up and uh, it, you know, otherwise is going to give you different types of uh, items. So the witch's oven is where you're going to want to start to get some of these things. The next thing you're going to want to do, once you've got that, is start breaking some tall grass. The reason for that is because witchery adds a bunch of different plants that you're going to want to find the seeds for, and then start planting. So let's get ourselves a few of the seeds that we're going to need, and I'll show you guys the plants and what they're going to be used for. So there's four different types of plants that are available, uh, belladonna, water artichoke, snowball, and mandrake seeds. Uh, the belladonnas are not uh, too crazy, just a pretty basic flower that you can harvest just fine. And you'll get uh, some belladonna flowers that you can use for certain things that we'll take a look at in just a little bit. Uh, the water artichoke seeds actually have to be planted on water itself, and you can grow those up, and you'll wind up getting yourself some water artichoke globes, which again, used for some crafting and such. Uh, and finally, the snowbell seeds are pretty neat you get snowballs from it cool and then finally there's the mandrake seed these are the ones you're going to want to watch out for because when you harvest these uh, mandrakes uh, sometimes some weird stuff can happen let's see I'm going to try and grow that again oh there we go oh, crazy wild mandrake after me and it gives you a little bit of a nauseous effect and starts screaming at you and does some nasty things. Go ahead and do yourself a favor and kill that thing as fast as you can. And he will properly drop the mandrake root that you're looking for. Cool. So watch out for those mandrakes. They're a little tricky. Now that you've got your hands on some mandrake root and some wood ash and some hint of rebirth, remember that's one of the little potions you get specifically from spruce saplings, you're able to create yourself mutandus. This is important stuff. It's going to allow you to mutate certain plants and tree saplings and such in the world to give you um, other unique stuff. Now some of the things need to be picked up um, with shears, so be ready with some of that, but simply right click on anything in the world and you'll see that it'll get transformed. Oh look, we just got ourselves an alder sapling. Cool. This is the only way to get these items. Uh, so, well, the, the, some of the items here. So like the alder sapling, you can only get that, I believe, from using the mutandus. And look, we just got a rowan sapling. Cool. That's another nifty thing to have uh, handy. And you can see, of course, it's also transforming into like birch saplings from vanilla Minecraft. Ooh, there's ember moss. I'm pretty sure that's the one you have to whack with uh, the shears. So mutandus is one of the first things you're going to want to create so that you can get some of this other stuff. Spanish moss. Also, shears only, I believe. Yep. Grab that stuff as quick as you can. Uh, so the mutandus, you do get eight of it per uh, crafting recipe here, so you don't need uh, to make too much of the hint of rebirth or mandrake root, but it's going to be useful for other stuff as well down the line. So again, that's kind of like the starting point of what you're looking for. 
Now before we get too deep into the mod, I should so show you some of the guides that are available. So you can see several books in my inventory that I've been ready with. One of the first ones I'll show you is that Witchcraft Collecting Fumes book. It's actually pretty easy to make. You're going to want to use that Belladonna flower that you got earlier. And a book, Feather, Ink Sack, and Charcoal, and that'll give you the Collecting Fumes book. This is going to give you just a little bit of a guide on how to get started uh, collecting some of the fumes from the oven. So we've been uh, collecting some things we showed you earlier that you can get a couple different, uh, like the Exhale and the Hint of Rebirth. These are the fumes that you're able to collect uh, with this furnace and you can see the recipe for each of the different ones in the book here so if you want to you can find it by way of the book uh, some of the other books are much more important to follow along with and we'll be taking a look at those as we get into uh, that different area uh, herbology for example is a nice place to take a look for some of the different plants to see uh, you know what all they are and what the different ones they, they can do so it's pretty important to check out all right, so I've gone ahead to plant my Spanish moss here so you guys can see that it actually does spread a little bit, just like vines do. And I've also planted a couple of the trees that we found. There's three trees, Rowan, Alder, and Hawthorne. And these uh, make up all the ingredients that you're going to use throughout the mod. There's a couple other things you're going to get, but we'll get to those later. Now let's take a look at some of the cool stuff you can make with the mod. One of the first and most basic things that you can probably make with witchery are called poppets. Now, poppets are a nifty little way to either apply some positive buffs to you or some negative buffs to some enemies of yours. So let's take a look at a couple of them. Uh, the first thing you want to do is make a basic poppet doll. Now, that's going to require some of that Spanish moss, which we just found. It's also going to need some wool and some string. And finally, it's going to need a bone needle, uh, which is basically made from bone and flint. Okay, so you sharpen the bone with some flint and you get a bunch of needles for it. Okay, that poppet is then going to be combined with a couple different things to give it certain buffs or effects for whatever player happens to be holding it. One of the most uh, easy ones to demonstrate for you is the Earth Protection Moppet. Okay, this guy, uh, as you can see here, Earth Protection, is simply a poppet with uh, feathers, clay, and dirt. Cool. So the poppets are going to be used to protect you, but you have to identify the person to be protected. So to that, you have to bind this poppet to that player or creature that you want to affect. And for that, we're going to need a tag lock kit. Tag lock kits are basically a combination of one of those bone needles and a glass bottle. And you're going to be able to use that needle to draw some essence from either another player or another creature and store that essence in a bottle that you can then use for your uh, poppets. You can also use it for some of the other rituals and stuff that we're going to get to later on. So it's important to note how to do this because these tag lock kits are probably going to be used quite a bit. In order to uh, activate this, you either right click on a player or creature, but do keep in mind that if you do that, there's a chance that the player might uh, notice you doing it and uh, you know he'll get a little bit of a message so be careful when doing it that way there's another way to handle this though and that is to uh, scrape some of like the hairs or maybe some of the stuff off the player's bed all you got to do is make sure a player has slept in the bed at some point and then go ahead and right click on the bed with the tag lock kit and that's going to harvest the essences of that player and now it's turned into a tag lock kit for me direwolf20 Cool. So this tag lock kit is now associated with me, and if I combine my earth protection poppet with my tag lock kit, I've now got an earth protection poppet for Direwolf 20. Now having this in my inventory will apply the bonuses that are associated with the earth protection poppet. For example, typically if I were to jump really, really far down to the ground, I might die. Let's see what happens if I go all the way up here and jump into this pit. That's certainly going to kill me, right? Nope, not so much. The Earth Protection Poppet was used up and it protected me from fall damage. Pretty cool. Now there's other kinds of poppets available. You can also get one uh, for water protection, which protects you from drowning. Uh, fire protection, which protects you uh, from death, from burning. You can also avoid uh, starvation with it. And uh, there's some other voodoo effects that can be uh, caused in this mod. And you might want to get yourself a voodoo protection poppet. Um, you can also uh, avoid tools getting broken with a tool protection poppet. And finally, if you get yourself, I think the most powerful one, the uh, death protection poppet, this guy is going to protect you from death altogether. Okay, uh, that's the poppet protection one. Here you go, death protection. It requires some more advanced stuff like diamond vapor and drop of luck, which we haven't seen how to make just yet, but I'll be showing you guys how to make that pretty soon. Those are your protection poppets. There's also some uh, darker magical poppets that are available, like the voodoo poppet, uh, which can cause nasty effects on the victim. Like, uh, let's take a look at that right now. Here's the voodoo poppet. And there's also the vampiric poppet, which is pretty neat, and I would definitely want to show you guys. 
So while it's a little hard to demonstrate this in a single player world, I've got a voodoo poppet here and I'm going to bind it to Direwolf 20. Let's see what kind of nifty stuff we can do. If you hold right click on it, you can see that uh, I'm getting thrown around. So it's kind of, uh, you know, causing some crazy effects on my player right there. I can also hold this poppet underwater. Let's see if I can get to a deeper source of water. And I might get some uh, drowning damage as a result of the poppet being held underwater. Uh, you can also go ahead and, um, you know, right click it on lava. Or if you want, what you can do is uh, hold shift right click and you'll notice that I took some damage. And if you've got bone needles in your inventory, it's going to use one of them up. And it'll go ahead and uh, damage the player when you shift right click it. You can't do it repeatedly too often. Uh, every now and then it looks like, well, actually not too bad. Yeah. So it's a little bit of damage, but it's definitely a nuisance. Now what you're probably going to want to know is how do I protect myself from voodoo? Well, all you need to do is, pretty obviously, make yourself a voodoo protection poppet. So go ahead and associate that with your tag lock, for my case it's direwolf20, and watch what happens to the player who tries to put a curse on direwolf20 now. Ah! Lightning! Fire! Bad stuff! So basically what happens is the player who's attacking somebody who's under a voodoo protection poppet will get uh, a return on their attack. It basically bounces the magic back and strikes them in the form of a lightning bolt. So be careful if you're going to curse somebody with these little voodoo poppets because you might get a little bit of pain in return um, if they're protected with the voodoo protection poppet. You'll also notice that the voodoo poppet itself and the protection poppet both take quite a bit of damage when that occurs. So uh, if you're not careful, you'll eventually, uh, your voodoo protection poppet will wear off or it'll be destroyed and you'll have to make yourself another one. And the final note with these poppets is that you need to have them in your inventory for them to take effect. So if you want to be protected from drowning, make sure to carry around the water protection poppet with you. If you want to be protected from uh, fall damage, you want to carry around the earth protection poppet. Uh, there's one exception to that, however, and that is the poppet shelf right there. If you place uh, your poppets in there, they will continue to protect you um, even if you're not holding them in your inventory. So if I go ahead and try and do this again, you'll see that I got lightning struck, even though I didn't have the protection poppet on me. It did take damage in the poppet shelf still, so it was destroyed this time. So make sure to uh, check your shelf every now and then and see if you have to replace any of these things. So now that we've got some simple magical uh, constructs out of the way, let's build something a little bit more interesting, shall we say. Let's take a look at the altar. Simply place down six of these altar blocks in a two by three structure. Now you're gonna need some Breath of the Goddess and some Exhale of the Horned One. Both of those require the witch's oven, so keep that in mind. And you're also gonna need some of this rowan wood and a few stone bricks. So that rowan wood definitely is gonna be used right here to make this. Uh, once you place down this last piece of the multi-block structure, it'll be covered in a nice red cloth and what this does is it actually draws energy to uh, energy and essence out of the atmosphere to charge the altar now Here's an important note about the altar. The more uh, wildlife or tree life nearby, basically any plants and trees, and the more fertile the environment, the more uh, powerful the altar will be. So if we were to grab ourselves some altar blocks and place them over here, uh, we'll see that we might have a different number. Well, 840, that's about the same. Let's try it kind of over here in the middle without any trees nearby. Five hundred and forty-seven. Uh, so there's different benefits, pros and cons to where you place your altar. You're going to want to have it somewhere that's really, you know, lush and fertile. Let's put it that way. If we were to perhaps throw it into a desert biome, I think we would find a far weaker altar. Yeah, five hundred forty-seven is the max power there. But don't worry, you can absolutely upgrade your altars with a couple upgrades. Now there's quite a few things you can use to upgrade your altar. All you got to do is shift right click and place the item on it. And you'll notice now that this altar has a significant larger capacity and it's also charging faster. Uh, the Wither Skeleton Skull is one of the most powerful things to upgrade an altar with. And there's a couple items you can craft as well that look really cool and uh, will also help to boost the power that the altar has as well as how quickly it's going to charge. Neat. Uh, I'm not going to show you all the stuff you can place on the altar. There's a handful of different things you can check out. Now what can we do with this magical energy you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. We've got the first thing to show you is the witch's distillery. Cool. This guy is going to be important for you. 
You might have noticed a little icon was here for a split second. That icon indicates that it's not receiving any power from a nearby altar. So it definitely needs to be placed near an altar. Uh, if it's not, you'll see that little icon indicating that there's no energy nearby. Uh, the range of an altar is about 14 to 16 blocks or so, so you don't have to be like right next to it. I mean, you can get a pretty decent range and still have uh, power flowing towards it, but you know, make sure that you're at least somewhat nearby the altar, and it's going to use up some of this magical energy for the distillery. So the distillery is another crafting mechanic that comes with witchery. Again, you're going to want some of these clay jars, which by the way are pretty easy to make. Uh, just four pieces of clay to get yourself four soft clay jars. Then you need to smelt them into a furnace just to get them cooked into like a regular old hardened clay jar. Once you've got that, you can use the distillery to uh, distill a bunch of different stuff. Let's take a look at some of these. Um, for example, there's uh, lapis. If you uh, distill lapis with some of the breath of the goddess, and remember that comes from the witch's oven, uh, you're going to get yourself uh, a tear of the goddess goddess and whiff of magic and foul fume and slime ball. So you can produce up to four ingredients out of the two that you combine in the distillery. And you can see there's a bunch of different recipes here to check out. So we'll be using some of these uh, components here in some of the spells and magics that we're going to be creating in the near future. So now that we've seen how to distill some of those magical essences that we already figured out, I think it's a time to get into brews. Brews are basically potions that are uh, some offensive, some defensive, and some with some really neat and interesting effects. And uh, your book here on brewing can help you out with it. You can see there's quite a long list of brews available, and there's several uh, ingredients that you're going to need to find in order to get your brewing going on. So let's get started by making ourselves a brewing stand that's going to make this work. Now you can't use the vanilla brewing stand for this. Nope, you actually have to use an item called the kettle. Okay, the kettle is uh, pretty easy to make. It's simply uh, one of those attuned stones, which I mentioned earlier, some string and some sticks and a cauldron. Okay, place that above some netherrack and light the netherrack on fire. There you go. Uh, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, place some stuff nearby and it looks really cool to have it sitting there brewing up. Uh, go ahead and place some water inside and that's going to make the basis of your brew. Then you need to add the ingredients. Now the good thing about this is Witchery seems to have some pretty good NEI interaction. So you can go ahead and look up the recipe for your brews in NEI or you can look it up with uh, the book that I mentioned, Brews and Infusions. Uh, simply go ahead and take a look in here or, and you'll see uh, the different ones available. So brewing potions is actually pretty easy. Number one, it's really important to make sure your fire stays lit. If this fire ever, ever burns out partway through the process, you're going to wind up with a uh, potion that uh, gets ruined. You'll know the potion's ruined because it'll just not look so good. So let's go ahead and toss in some items. These little wisps of smoke, these little swirls, that's a good thing. If you see those swirls, it means the potion's coming along nicely. Now I'm tossing in a handful of items here, not showing you just yet what I'm talking about. And ta-da! We've got this nice white potion that's sputtering out little stuff and little white wisps coming out. That means the potion's done. Simply right-click on it with a glass bottle, or three, and you'll wind up with three versions of this potion, which happens to be the Brew of Webs. Oh, sheep! Let's see what kind of fun we can have with the Brew of Webs. Ha! <laughs> That is cool. Can you imagine being on a server and doing a little PvP and trapping somebody in some cobwebs? They would be raging pretty hard. Uh, so yeah, the Brew of Webs, very nifty little potion that you can throw at people and do nasty stuff with. And there's quite a few of these brews that you can have fun with. Uh, I'll show you a couple of them here in a minute, but there's a couple other things I want to mention. So one of the things I used to make the Brew of Webs uh, was a dense cobweb. That was easy to make. Just some string around a cobweb gives you a dense cobweb, no problemo. Flower, mushroom, uh, belladonna flower, whiff of magic, which we got from the witch's oven. But there's one other item we got here, and that was the wool of a bat. That doesn't have a crafting recipe so we can only assume that the wool of the bat comes from killing bats. Yeah, that's probably going to make a little bit of sense, huh? Uh, however, there's one thing that you might want to know. Uh, it's pretty rare to get some of these drops, and there's several things that get added as part of witchery that are dropped from either uh, vanilla monsters or dropped from other stuff. Let's go over here and take a look at a couple of the things. Uh, we've got the wool of bat, we've got the tongue of dog, and there's a couple other things along those lines. Uh, what you're going to want to do to help you out with that is uh, go ahead and craft yourself the following item. An Arthana. 
This is a tool that's made with uh, an emerald, as you can see, and some gold. And this is going to be uh, something you're going to want to use to attack with. So while it's not going to do much damage, it's going to greatly increase your chance of getting one of these rare drops that are added by witchery. So make sure to grab this item when you can. It's also used in some of the magics later on, but uh, it's definitely something you're going to want to hang on to. And, uh, you know, when you're out there uh, hunting for some wool of the bat or something like that, grab the Arthana, use that. And since this is the Witchery mod, you also have the Witch's Hat and the Witch's Robes. Oh man, how cool do I look. I like it. And aren't these, these aren't like just a little fashion accessory either. You can actually use these for a purpose. Let's go ahead and demonstrate. Uh, having these on here gives you a chance to have um, some additional brews made in the brewing stand. So it's definitely something you're going to want to do if you're going to be doing a lot with these potions. Let me get uh, a couple other items here to go ahead and brew up a different potion and I'll show you. So I'm going to combine in my brewing stand a rowan sapling, a rose, some alder saplings looking good so far. We still got that little black uh, swirls going on, the hawthorn sapling, and then finally the tongue of dog. Ooh, there we go. Nice. Let's get our glass bottles here and collect. Let's see. One, two, three. Oh, still only got three. Like I said, it's only a chance. Oh, wait, no, I got five. Nice. So I guess uh, when you right click, you have a chance of getting extra. It, you still only have three right clicks on it, but you have a chance of getting some extra there. Let's go ahead and see what this does. The brew of sprouting. Sprouts a tree wherever it's thrown. <laughs> That's cool. You can also throw it at your feet. And ta-da! Hello up there. Wow, that was tall. wonder if I can do this twice. Yeah, I can. Hmm. Pretty sure I've got to pop it over there protecting me from fall damage. Hooray, I did. Cool. Yeah, so another nifty uh, gadget right there. Oh, yeah, that poppet's uh, pretty much dead now, but that's okay. I'll try not to jump anymore in this mod spotlight. So, yeah, lots of cool brews. I mean, you've got stuff like the Brew of Vines. You've got stuff like the Brew of Thorns. Brew of Ink is a neat one. Uh, whoever their fifth uh, is blinded. <laughs> Nice. Um, Brew of Erosion is a cool one here. If we go ahead and toss this out, it's going to go ahead and erode away any blocks that it hits. Cool. And uh, this one's pretty neat. The Brew of Raising. Raises some undead. Cool. And I'll show you something very cool with that Brew of Raising. It's actually very useful. It'll be used pretty soon in one of the items you're about to see. So a bunch of potions to check out, definitely worth uh, seeing. There's a lot of interesting stuff to get here from your brewing. Uh, and again, some of the brewing uh, ingredients do require things like, here's a reek of misfortune. That's uh, something from the witch's oven. But uh, let's see, I'm pretty sure this oil of vitriol, that comes from the distillery. So again, you're going to need the distillery for some of your potions and some other ingredients for some of the other crafting later on. So let's recap. So far we've covered the basics of uh, the witchery mod, how to get some of the ingredients you need. We've covered how to do some brewing of potions using the witch's oven. We've covered how to uh, use the distillery and how to make an altar to start building up some magical essence, which will be used when you're using the distillery. And it's also going to be used in the next piece of this mod, which is circle magic. Circle magic is very, very cool. It's, I think it's one of my favorite parts of the mods. It's very nifty. Let's get a book for it. Uh, circle magic. There we go. Uh, this book here will give you all the information you need to know about making witchcraft circles. Uh, you draw circles on the ground, and then you can use them to create different um, magical effects and things, and you can uh, affect players, you can infect the environment. There's a bunch of different stuff you can do with these circles. You can see there's 70 pages within this book so far. Uh, so let's take a look at a couple of the basic circles, and then uh, what we're probably going to do is wrap up part one of the spotlight after we look at a couple basic things, and then we'll come back in part two to look at some of the more advanced circles and then other parts of the mod that we haven't even gotten to yet. So let's go ahead and get started with a basic circle. Uh, in order to do this, first off you're going to need some golden chalk, which is uh, some yellow dye, some redstone, some golden nuggets, and you're also going to need some ritual chalk here. You'll get two ritual chalk from the following recipe. Some of the wood ash, remember you get that from the witch's oven, the tear of the goddess, which is uh, part of the distillery, and then also for your ritual chalk you're going to need some gypsum, which uh, also comes from the distillery. It's uh, quicklime and foul fuel. Fumes. By the way, quicklime, really easy to make. Wood ash in a crafting table gets you quicklime. So it's just a straight up conversion. Okay. So once you've got your ritual chalk and a piece of golden chalk, so you're going to need one of each, uh, go ahead and place your golden chalk 
right there on the ground. Ta-da! You'll notice that it takes a little bit of damage, so you can use this chalk quite often. Now to draw your circle, there's actually several sizes of circles, uh, either 7x7, 11x11, or 15x15. Unfortunately, there's not no 9x9, sorry about that, uh, but you know, maybe he'll add a 9x9 in the future. I'll see if I can talk him into it. Alright, so a 7x7 circle is pretty easy. One, two, three from here, um, and then what you'll have is the following. So place it right there, two blocks away, so it's three in total. And we're going to have to probably move this distillery for this demonstration. So let's place the circle like so. And the same thing on this side, one, two, three. Same thing on this side, one, two, three. And then lastly, the same thing on this side. And then uh, to complete the circle, the uh, blocks in between each area here. And ta-da, we've got our first witch's circle. Now this can be used to create several uh, very cool and nifty rituals that are going to cause some effects on the environment, like I said. So uh, also note that there's two other kinds of chalk which will be used in, in some other rituals, which we'll get to later. Let's now take a look at some of the uh, different things we can do. So one of the things you're going to have to do is... Uh, absorb some power from a nearby altar. So make sure the center block of this, the golden chalk, is within about, like I said, 14 or 16 blocks from the altar, and uh, you're able to cast it. Now, when you look up the uh, different rites and different um, magics that you can do with this, you'll, you'll note how much altar power is required, along with what ingredients are required, what size of the circle is required, and what color of the dust is required. So if we flip through here, we'll see this requires uh, the purple chalk. Uh, this requires a 15 by 15 circle of purple chalk. It's a much, much more powerful right, which we'll definitely check out. You can see it requires 6,000 altar power. Okay, so size of circle, uh, the color of the uh, dust of the circle that's going to be required, and then the uh, items that you have to throw in and the altar power. So to get this thing to work is really pretty easy. Just make the appropriately sized and colored circle as shown. So we've got the uh, ritual glyphs here that are made with ritual chalk. Okay, and it's a seven by seven circle, so we've got that part covered. The rite of sanctity makes it so that monsters cannot enter the circle. Now this lasts indefinitely, but requires 16 power a second with initial investment of 500 power. Cool. Let's take a look at what happens. So if we were to uh, go ahead and uh, drop, like it says, a feather and a piece of redstone into the center of the circle. Now I think this can exist anywhere in the circle, so as long as it's in there somewhere, you're in good shape. And to get it going, simply right click, like so. It'll absorb those items, and then it'll start activating. And we can see it's running right now. Cool. Uh, we can also see that it's draining a little power from the altar. Nice. Now the, powder, the uh, altar is recharging, but remember that's because we buffed it up pretty strong to the point where it's regenerating a lot more power than normal. So this is a pretty basic one. So let's go ahead and set it to nighttime and get ourselves some zombies to start attacking. Sound like a plan? Hey guys, how's it going? Ha! That is cool. They can't get in. Nice. So simply right click on the altar or the uh, circle center here again and you'll see that the little redstone signal disappeared. That means that the altar uh, has stopped draining power, so it's off pretty much. Uh, now something else we can do that's pretty neat, right of imprisonment. Monsters cannot leave the circle. Same deal, lasts indefinitely but requires 16 power. And there's lots of other rights we can take a look at, like Conjure a Dome. Impenetrable to monsters, uh, it lasts indefinitely but requires 24 uh, power per second. So that's obsidian and redstone. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, go ahead and get yourself some obsidian, and we'll toss that in there and that in there, and we'll right click on the center block. And we should get a dome that protects us. Cool, look at that. Now I can walk through just fine, but monsters, they probably won't be able to. Let's see. Come here, you. Ha, ah, you can't get in. He's trying, he really is, but he can't. See, he's chasing after me. Now this again lasts for a while, but if we right click in the center, it should uh, dissipate, and you can see that it's gone away. Here's a nifty one. Wood ash plus stone sword. Oops. If you uh, pick up the item before it finishes, don't do that. Obviously, it doesn't work anymore. I'm going to stay inside the circle, because bad things are about to happen. Ah! Lightning! Cool. Oh man, big nasty thunderstorm. Ah! 
Now you might note that there's going to be a lot of different circles you might want to have around at different times and you might be out on the road on the go and you might want to real quick throw down a circle and do something uh, with some neat effects that might not need uh, the power of an altar and sometimes there's alternate ways to do this which I'll show you probably in the next part of the spotlight so that you don't need the altar. Uh, in order to do that and quickly get this uh, circle down on the ground you're going to want to get yourself a circle talisman. Now what this is is, is basically uh, some gold and some diamond. All you got to do is drop that into the circle with a piece of redstone and when you activate the altar or the circle there it's going to use up those items and it's going to soak up the entire circle and store it in that talisman. So now we've got a circle talisman that represents a small ritual and if we go right click that on the ground somewhere it's going to replace that just like so. Now it used it up so it's back to a regular circle talisman so we have to pretty much pick it up again uh, if we want to have it but we can you know move it around and make it a lot easier to transport this stuff. Cool, look at that. So if we want to have this over here, for example, um, boom, ta-da, very cool. So just keep that in mind. It's a nice way to transport your circles. Now what I want to show you guys is a pretty nifty one. Um, it's, it's going to require a couple steps though. Let's take a look at this, the rite of binding. Cool. Now this is going to require some altar power. So let's uh, move this guy back. Well, actually we're close enough to an altar that we should be good. This guy should have over 500. Nice. So he doesn't have any uh, upgrades on him and he's not near any trees, but he should be powerful enough. So in order for this to work, we need a waystone and some ender dew and some glowstone dust. Glowstone dust. A waystone, uh, which is pretty much easy to make. It's a piece of flint and one of those bone needles. Cool. Waystone. And uh, what was the last piece? Ender dew. Ender dew is uh, part of the distillery. So you see you distill an ender pearl and you'll get some ender dill, dew. And uh, what you do is you place these guys on the ground and activate the ritual. And it's going to infuse that waystone with the location of the circle. And you can see that it's now bound uh, to the overworld. Pretty cool. Uh, you can also, if you want, um, duplicate this right of binding here. If you put two waystones, ender dew and redstone, and you're gonna need some more power, so we have to wait for this to charge up. But uh, what you can do now is use this to teleport back to this location. So why don't I demonstrate that now with the right of transposition. Teleport to the bound waystones location. All you gotta do is drop a waystone, but do note that this is not a white circle, it's actually the purple one. So let's go draw one of those over here right now. Uh, we gotta get ourselves a um, other wear chalk, which is a different crafting recipe, by the way. It requires an ender pearl, some of those water artichokes that we saw earlier, and some lapis. And uh, we can get this made pretty easily. And I did something wrong. Oh, no, wait, I didn't. We're good. I just misplaced this thing. All right, so now that we've got this circle here ready to go, all we got to do is drop our waystone of the overworld and right click, and poof teleported. Nice. Now there's a lot more of these circle magics that you can do that are actually pretty powerful. Uh, and I'm going to show them to you in part two of the spotlight. This was more just to whet your appetite, but uh, you can summon a tag lock player or creature to the circle, or you can uh, transpose some iron from the ore below. There's a bunch of different things that you can do with some of the more advanced circles. Like I said, 70 pages of circles. I haven't even shown you a uh, tip of the iceberg. Some require multiple circles. Some require something which is called a witch's coven, which I'll show you guys about and, and give you some information on. Some crazy, crazy stuff. That looks like a pretty nasty circle there. Hell on Earth? Yeah, I'm a little bit afraid of using that one. But what we're going to do is wrap up the spotlight here. I'm going to come back in part two of the Witchery Spotlight to show you some of the other circles that are make um, that you can make, uh, show you what's involved in them, show you uh, about Witches' Covens, which are required for some of the more advanced magics. I'll show you about Familiars, which are really neat, and some of the infusions where you can actually infuse your player with some magical abilities, giving you the option to cast spells uh, outside of circles. And I'll even show you um, a a couple uh, a wand that's available and a couple of the other items that give you some really neat effects believe me i've barely scratched the surface of this mod so for now this is direwolf20 signing off hope you've enjoyed the spotlight and look forward to part two take it easy